run a year nine. Uh, I'm just going to go through some trigonometry for people who might have been away or have missed this. And I'm going to go through the three example type questions that you, you need to be able to do. The first one is using trigonometry to find an unknown side when the pronumeral is on top. So I'm going to do exercise 3F, question 8 here. If I read the question, one end of a 12.2 metre rope is tied to a boat. Well, there's a picture over here. The other end is tied to an anchor, which is holding the boat steady. I've got an angle of 34 degrees and the rope is 12.2 metres long with the anchor. How deep? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to give a pronumeral here to this depth, and I'm going to use D. It doesn't matter what pronumeral you use. Now, the first thing we have to worry about is picking the right ratio. So what information have I got? Well, I've got the 34 degrees. I need to find the D, which is adjacent beside it. And I've got the hypotenuse, which is 12.2. So what ratio use adjacent, uses adjacent and hypotenuse and I go well no worries that's cos so cos 34 and this is my next step write the equation use a trigonometric ratio the angle and then write the ratio and in this case it's adjacent d over 12.2 now remember that cos 34 is a number so this is just an equation which we did before and I'm just going to multiply by 12.2 and multiply by 12.2 and that'll give me 12.2 cos 34 equals D and I'll do that on my calculator and I get 10.11 four dot 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 how many decimal places do they want two decimal places so 10.11 meters and there's my solution that's nice and easy and i check in the back of the book and i'm right so there's one with the pronumeral on top let's move down now to exercise 3g and this is where the pronumeral is on the denominator so let's take question five. And again, we read the question. A kite is flying at a height of 27 metres above the anchor point. If the string is inclined at 42 degrees, what is the length of the string? Well, let's put a pronoun in there. Let's call this L, the length of the string. So, Again, what have I got? I've got the side opposite that angle of 42. And again, I've got the hypotenuse. So I have opposite and hypotenuse. And the key is picking the right ratio. And you go, that's no worries. That's sine. So now I write an equation. Sine 42 equals opposite 27 over L. Now here my numerator is in the bottom. It's okay, sine 42 is a value, so is 27. I can multiply by the L, which will get it off the bottom. I could take the reciprocal of both sides. So I get L times sine 42 equals 27. And then I divide by sine 42, remembering that sine 42 is a number and that leaves me with L equals 27 over sine 42. Now you could have gone straight to that step. I would have been happy if you've gone first straight from the first line to this line but as long as you know what you're doing and then you go to your calculator and it's 27 divided by sine 42 and I get L equals 40.35. It looks sort of right, because it's got to be a longer distance than 27, because it is the hypotenuse. They want to the nearest meter. So L equals 
meters. And I look at my solutions in the back of the book and it says 40, so I'm happy with that. So finally, let's go down here to finding an unknown angle. So let's take question eight here. We'll read the question. Here's question eight, and this is from 3H. It says, our road rises at a grade of three in 10. Well, they've drawn it for me, three in 10. And it doesn't matter what measurements are here. It could be three meters and 10 meters. It could be three centimeters and 10 centimeters. It could be three kilometers and 10 kilometers. It's not going to make any difference. Remember, trigonometry is based on the fact that these are all similar triangles. Find the angle to the nearest degree the road makes with the horizon. Well, the road there, I'm going to call that angle theta. That's what I need to find. And what have I got? I've got the opposite side to that angle and the adjacent side to that angle. So what uses opposite and adjacent? Well, that's no worries. That's tan. And now is my next step. I write the equation. Tan theta equals opposite. Well, that's 3 over 10. Now, luckily, we now know how to do the inverse function of any trig ratio. So we inverse tan. It's like doing a square root and undoing it. Uh, undoing a power by doing a square root. Inverse tan of 3 over 10. Now, your calculator will automatically put the brackets in, but in case it didn't, it's important that you do put that fraction in brackets. And when you do it, you go shift tan, and my bracket or parentheses immediately comes up, 3 divided by 10, you can write 3 over 10 or 3 divided by 10, it doesn't matter, close the bracket, and I get 16.699. Now when that's written as a decimal, I don't have to worry about putting it in degrees, minutes and seconds, because I know as a decimal that this number can make, because I'm only going to the nearest degree, this number will tell me that it's closer to 17 because in its decimal form, so 17 degrees. But if I wanted to know to the nearest minute, I would just press my degrees minutes button, which is two buttons above the eight. And I would get, if I press that, 16 degrees, 41 minutes and 57 seconds and I know now that the halfway mark is 30 and that would be again 17 degrees. So there are the three examples of how they can ask you a question. Finding an unknown side with the pronumeral in the numerator finding an unknown side with the pronumeral in the denominator, and finding an angle um, by using the inverse sine, cos, or tan. Good luck with your work.